morning all so today we will come with a very interesting topic that is uh, how to identify flood over the radar image of two different temporal uh, image okay so basically whatever you i just showed you in the last my lecture that is basically how to extract the water body and that i showed over directly uh, over the after flood image but sometime what we required is we need to compare okay like before and after image okay and then only we will identify the exact locations of the flood okay like that's why you require at least uh, two uh, different multi-data image so from there you can able to compare these two different time image okay so uh, please stay with me and uh, it will be a very interesting uh, session okay and you will going to learn so many things okay so please stay with me we will going to start that so first thing what we are going to do that is we are going to take a two different time image okay so that uh, basically i try to focus over some one of the famous cyclone maybe uh, you heard about the yes cyclone which has happened in west bengal so i am going to target that last uh, lecture maybe i showed you over the asani now on um, this one i am going to show you over the uh, this particular yes cyclone okay it's a very famous cyclone which has happened in bengal so what i did i just taken the two different date image okay so that i will try to see this is was ashan is the last uh, lecture which i given to you so what is our main focus now today's lecture it is the yes like clone one okay so that's two dates data sets i already downloaded if you see here the first date is actually the uh, that is may image okay that is may 2021 may 17 image and it's a p4 cyclone and another one i used that is uh, uh, that is also may uh, 29 so after cyclone so cyclone was happened i think 24th or 25th on that particular date okay so let's see uh, means what we are going to do we are going to add these two image to our product explorer okay so this is the uh, how we are actually use it or uh, added this to uh, image okay so uh, see if you see uh, the bands of this okay so that here you just see i am just taking the slc product actually so better always uh, you can go for um, grd product so that it will be uh, the processing will be very easy to do i already showed you how you are actually going to use the slc sorry grd products okay but uh, if you are taking because i already did analysis uh, during that time i use uh, the slc product because slc have uh, options to go for both uh, the the amplitude and phase informations okay so uh, but uh, obviously this slc product size will be very big okay so always it will recommend it you can go for if you are only doing the uh, phase based i mean uh, amplitude based analysis and uh, related to flood go for the grd products but uh, as I already use it here as LC, so that's why I'm going to show you over the SLC product. Otherwise, it will take time to download the image. So let's learn learn over this only. Okay. So for doing this, is I think already we show I showed you how to you are actually processing this particular data. If you see, we have the radar. Okay. So then we can go to the Sentinel one stops. Okay. And then within the Sentinel tops, you have the Sentinel one top split. So so whatever the area you required okay you can fix it here and you can uh, save it accordingly okay like this first uh, over the first product i'm just going to run so if you go this processing parameter see geometric area should be same you should remember whatever processing you are doing the geometric area should be same for the both okay and you just see here now uh, what i am going to do i am just going to select the mode so we have idw1 and 2 and 3 three modes will be there which is covering this total area in a three different parts okay so you have to select the accordingly so i just selected suppose idw2 so which is starting from this to uh, that uh, center of the part so most of the affected area uh, you can found a i hope in this particular location so let's start and see okay or else you can go for uh, this also okay like thick this is very inside so it's far from the coastal area there's less chances of effect of cyclone so better i will take them in between which is covering the sea coast and the uh, the land area also okay so that i just uh, selected accordingly and uh, you can go for the vh 
if you don't want the both polarized it's better you can go for the vv so vv as i told you that vv will be the better you can go for any kind of flood based analysis also you can use the vv okay and uh, the maximum number of burst also you can use accordingly okay so as we see the number of the burst we can take at uh, 228 okay so you can go for 428 okay so we can uh, take this much okay 428 so now uh, this is uh, ready because i am taking this middle one iw1 and i am taking the vb polarizations and i am just taking 8 to 4 to 8 okay the our burst and then you come back this and wherever you want to save this so you can make it so how we're going to identify the this process name so that will be on the split data okay so that will name will come as a split so you can click please uh, run this so let's wait for a few minutes to get the output so uh, first one is done okay so this one is done if you see here this is already done is a split one but this is for the first one now you have to run the same process for the second data sets also so how we're going to do that same you have to go to radar okay then sentinel tops and sentinel tops split okay so you can take it and you can go and select it very carefully of this particular dates okay you can check it here the date is 29 so last one you did that is 17 okay so this is the difference the split one okay so you can select the same process go to the pre-processing you have also you have the same you have to check this iw2 mode obviously geometric uh, area should match okay then take vb and then you can go for the burst also same suppose 4 to 8 okay go to io parameter and then check the same location it is going or not okay and then simply click on run so uh, after running this process you can see this is the output you will get earlier you will not able to see anything now you can at least able to see this image okay so you need further pre-processing of the image okay so this is a before flood and this is you can say that is after flood image okay so these are two different dates uh, we already did this process okay so uh, let's we go for the next process to uh, to do the analysis okay so we will go for it okay so the next steps which we will going to do that is uh, apply orbit files uh, you also uh, see uh, we already have uh, uh, there is uh, so many uh, steps which we are going to run okay over this so first is we have to know the orbital things okay so we have to do the orbital collections for this image okay so let's do that so uh, let's go to radar and click on the apply orbit file and see you have to give the input of your both the split one okay so you just remember the number so accordingly you have to see blocks because you will not able to see the full name here so by number you can understand okay so that's why i just uh, expand this so first you can go for the three and then we can go for the uh, four also so i am just selecting the three go to the processing parameter okay the auto download is fine the polynomial degree i am just taking three only and do not fail the new orbital file is not fine that i already explained in last my videos okay so just run this process and get the output okay let's run so now just see uh, this orbital file outputs now came so what we'll do now we will going to apply the same process for the another date okay so you can go to the radar and click on the apply orbit and this time you have to select the number four okay always remember the numbering okay so now this is the number four which i'm going to select okay so the processing parameter will be the same and you just click on this okay so now you are actually going to calculate the orbital file for the after flood image okay so click on run and let's wait for the results okay so you just see i successfully run uh, the split orbit over the other image also okay so uh, this is the uh, orbital it, it's done now we can go for the calibration okay so we have to do the calibration of the both of the images okay so we will start the calibration now okay so you can go to the radar 
okay and you can go to the radiometry and you can go to the calibration okay so you have to see which products that is the number five and number six your final two products so you have to select the number five first okay and uh, you just go to the processing parameter see over the vv we are trying to calculate the sigma naught value okay so that is in calibrations what we are actually going to do so select that in case of GRD products, you can go directly on this, but uh, as we are going to SLC, so the procedure will be little large. Okay, so now uh, you just see here uh, the target will be whatever it will output come. So how will you understand? So orbital calibration by this you can understand. Okay, so simply run it for the first image and then we will going to run the first the second image also. So let's wait for the results for a few minutes. Uh, yes, uh, that output uh, already came okay we just see the results is uh, came so what we have to do we have to uh, run the same process over the second date image like six okay so we go to the radar uh, radiometry and calibrate it okay so you have to select the proper one six go to processing parameter check okay vv is there polarization and output in the sigma naught value so now i am just going to run over this so let's run and wait for the results uh, so uh, see this is the two output came after after the results if you see this is the your uh, sigma naught value okay so this is a before flood image obviously you understand that by the date and uh, you can see uh, this is your uh, after uh, flood effect so if you see this particular place actually so you will get some effect of flood which will get an understanding okay so if you want you can make a uh, subset of that particular area so let's see uh, we can go for this uh, steps later okay so first we will go for the further processes okay to to process this and then we'll go for the comparison okay so let's go for the next uh, uh, now actually why we are actually doing the next step the debusting that is because of these lines okay you just see here you, these lines are coming now so what we are going to do we are actually going to remove these lines okay so that's why we will go for the debusting so if you want to go the debusting technique then you got to go to, go to radar sentinel tops and sentinel uh, s1 tops debust okay so you can uh, run this debusting techniques over your image again you have to be very careful to select the both images okay just see here it is first image is selected so we have to run over the seven and eight so first you select on that okay go to the processing parameters see the only one polarization is selected now you can go for the run so this is uh, for the the seventh image and then same thing we will going to run over the eighth image also to get the output and we will see it okay so now if i close it and then again i have to run the same same thing over uh, that uh, the eighth image okay so it will wall reversed uh, reversed so you have to select it very carefully on the eighth image yeah okay so this is now on eighth image i am going to run same you just check properly if everything is done then simply click on run and once you will get the output you will see the lines which is coming in between okay so that it will now remove okay so this is because of the same uh, we are actually using the slc product so the processing steps will be little more okay so if you go here and check it okay now go to the band and see the bands so now these lines are actually removed okay so same thing you will get for this band also and you can see this is the after flood image and uh, you can see very nicely that uh, these are the area which is very much affected by the flood and uh, now we can see this very nicely okay the lines is also now gone so now we can go for the further step huh. so before going for the further steps we can compare these two results as is it is uh, orbital calibration is actually done now so you can actually co means uh, make these two window side by side and you can make a correlations uh, between these two and you can understand which area is actually affected so you can go in a windows okay and you can make it as a tile horizontally and uh, you can check actually see one side if i move another side it will move so you see uh, most of the means found area which i found that is this is the area which is actually uh, going for uh, effect so 10 is my the after flood so you understand that so you just see here uh, these are the two area which i found uh, after floods there is some effect okay 
because uh, it's long back I did so I am not knowing exactly so just for your demo I'm just showing you but you just see here this is the place which you can identify that something happens in after flood okay so let's go for the further steps uh, but uh, one more things which we can do uh, before going this further steps that is uh, we can make these bands in, in, in you can say this is which you see here if you go in a color manipulations okay so uh, see this is the means uh, so many uh, steps which we're going to forward for the next steps like to process this particular image so uh, this further process as i told you that is we are actually uh, did this process because uh, we make it the histogram should be stretched properly okay so that's why we convert it linear to db okay and you can click on yes and you just see here uh, you will get a histogram which you can make a control but there you will not get that particular histograms to control it okay same thing you can do for the this also to make and convert it linear to db okay so make it and you just see here you will get this file also in a db so this is the db in db you are basically getting uh, this power of this control okay like uh, histogram you will get so to control it okay so now we can move to the uh, next steps and we can go for the further analysis uh, now we can calculate the multi look okay over the SAR image okay after uh, that process okay so you can uh, go to the same uh, procedure like if you go to the radar and now you can go to the utility Sam, uh, this is the multi look okay so you have to run the multi look over the both images which is your ninth and tenth so first time apply over the ninth processing so number of the bands you can go for the four and one for this slc products okay so now i am just going to understand that is uh, you can go for the steps like calibrations okay debustings and now we can go for the multi loop okay so let's run this multi loop over this band and then and then expand also and see the output first okay so i will run it okay and let's wait for the output for a few minutes yeah so now output is ready if you just see here this is the uh, output of the that okay and uh, that is ml and if you click on this then you can very easily understand now image how it is now very much clear okay the same process now you have to apply over the 10th image also so go to the radar okay then utility and then click on the multi look multi look is uh, the process is actually making the pixels and the square pixels so that's why you are getting a uh, clear view earlier it was is something uh, stretched image like that okay so that's why we make it some multi look to make it as a square pixels of that. that's why you are getting a very nice view of that particular image and you can go you just see here processing parameters we will make it uh, the same like number four and one and you can go and so this is the not on that's a tenth image again you have to make understand that should be a tenth image okay so you are going to run and uh, let's run this and see the output of this also so this is after the flood okay so let's run and let's wait few minutes to get the output so uh, this is so many number of bands is actually creating so maybe some uh, you make a mistake so you should be very careful what is the um, bands and which band you are actually uh, running and you just see here this is the after flood uh, that area which are going to affect it okay so these are the two images we are actually now getting so now you just understand the process how we are actually slowly, slowly moving to that analysis so let's go for the further uh, but now it's the same process you have to do for that this two band also again that is uh, you have to convert it is in linear to db okay and the same thing you have to apply over this also from this band and you have to convert to linear to db okay so this is the very important okay for your histogram creation and generations okay just see here whenever you are creating that then you have options for the stretching of the histograms okay so these are the two images if you just see the image then also you can get understanding the area of some effect by the cyclone okay so that is very clearly visible in this particular image and uh, now we can move to the uh, next steps of this analysis okay so it will be very interesting so now uh, the further process is going to do the geometric corrections over this two image so to get exact the 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 latitude longitude over that particular location so that's why you require this geometric correction process so that also you need to apply over the both image of 11 and 12 so you can go to the radar geometric 
terrain corrections, range Doppler terrain corrections. Okay, so ever you should see that is properly selected E11. Yes, processing steps it will be fine. You are downloading with the SRTM DEM, so using that you are going to do that uh, analysis and it will also both that your VB and VB band so that it will going to uh, uh, run over that geometry correction process of these two bands okay so uh, very carefully you just select this 11 because the same process we have to run for the 12 hours it will take few minutes time because it's a huge area okay so otherwise you can go for the subsetting process b so before also which i'm not showing because if you are taking the grd data i can go for that as i'm taking slc product so i'm going like this way okay so okay anyway let's uh, run the output and see the output first so see the output uh, which is generated okay so once it is done and you just see now this is the other side and uh, this our west eastern side and it is now perfectly coming okay so once we use the dam now so that's why this uh, ocean side was removed okay we are actually subsetting it is kind of subsetting also okay so that is we are already described in the last lecture so now we are actually going to do the same process over the 12 bands also so you have to go to radar okay uh, geometry corrections terrain corrections range doppler terrain corrections okay and you have to go to processing parameters you have to check properly which is selected 13 is selected now you have to select the 12 okay and now you can go and select this processing parameters it will be fine select the io and let's run and see the output wait for few minutes to get the output and once the output will come we will show you the output so see now the output is actually ready so if you just uh, now open this uh, band 14 and you just see this so this is the uh, after flood and if you go to this so this will get a before flood okay so now you can get a very nice understanding about the before flood and after flood effect now the question is uh, uh, see uh, first is we have to convert this now in db okay so same process you have to do so just see linear to db yes okay you just see linear to db band so this is the linear to db bands obviously this is for the histogram we are actually doing this okay and uh, see this is actually it is not uh, this is just a virtual band okay so if you want to convert in a permanent band then right click and click on this convert band okay now it will be a converting a band so we see this now it is actually changed same thing you have to do right click linear to db yes okay so see this is a virtual band we are so you will get an v means virtual bands okay so if you see this is the output okay of your virtual band so now you want to convert it in a permanent uh, as a band okay so then you just right click and click on this convert band so now it is converted but it's still not saved you have to save it so go to the file and save products so once you did that now these two bands are perfectly safe so now what we are going to do we are actually basically trying to stack these two different type of data okay so that's why we have to go to radar uh, okay and uh, we have to do the core registration process over uh, these two image okay so radar you can go to the core registrations okay and uh, you can go for the stacks and you can click on this uh, create stacks okay so to to creating uh, the the stacking of these two different dates which we just created so now you have to add all the bands which is uh, required for this so you just simply click on add okay but you just see what is the major output you want that is this two image now this is two are actually your final outputs okay so you just see here uh, tlc tlc image that you two use required you not required from this to this okay so what you can do you can simply click on minus okay so these will bands are not uh, going to stack so these two are the final bands which will going to stack it here okay so we can go for the further process of the stacking so we, once you stack then two different dates will come overlay so you can overlay this two image and you can do the processing over it so now uh, we are actually going to uh, doing this scratching uh, st uh, stacking on the stacking we are already added these two dates and you just see here in the create uh, stack so what you have to do in this initial uh, offset method will be there no? that you can go for this and select it as a product geolocation okay so that will be fine and now you can go to this uh, further and you can change the name of this particular things so see here it is actually giving you any any single date image information it is actually going to show you 
okay so what you can do it so you 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 can remove this part okay they remove this part okay so that it will be understand that this is actually a stacked image of the two dates two dates okay dates dates i'm just giving uh, a name like two dates okay stack two dates stack so that i can understand okay it's a proper way you can understand it so uh, let's uh, run this and uh, see the output how it is coming okay we will wait for a few minutes to get the output okay now uh, you can see uh, this uh, already we have stuck a stack image of the four dates so you just see 17 may and 29 may why the two bands one is your uh, the decibel bands you understand which i already did so you just see open so this is your uh, that band and uh, that is the image uh, results as a output of the stack of the two different dates it's came now we will go some we will do something interesting we will going to see one image and another image in overlay and we will try to see that changes of this flooded area and we will also try to focus to create our gp composite to highlight the uh, that uh, flooded area okay so let's do that and see uh, once it is came now so and see it is a histogram is there because this so you have uh, do the linear stretching over your image and you can check uh, how it is changing over your image okay so that is the uh, process you can do the linear things and you can highlight it the uh, flooded area much more so that is the advantage of the stretching so once you turn for in your db so you will get these op options to activate okay so uh, same type of stretching you can apply it over the another date also you just see here if i double click over this okay so this is your image and if you want to the stretching of these particular things also you can stretch you just see here i can highlight it the flooded area much more clearly okay so this is the process how you will do the linear stretch and you can highlight that particular flooded area is much more better with because of this uh, options of histogram stretching okay so now you understand the digital image processing histogram stretching is how much important and how how we are actually doing the uh, we are doing we are actually playing with the the images uh, using the stretching techniques to get a better information okay so now we can go for the further yeah. now to create the the composite band what you can do you can uh, manage your layer from the layer manager you just see here and the layer managers we have the various band options to to manage all our layers okay so that is the means uh, the things which you will get it from here okay so that is the different different types of image we are actually getting and checking it okay so just uh, see th this is the actually the outputs which is came after the stretching so now uh, you just see to creating the one layer and another another okay so what you have to do you just see here in layer manager as i told you that you have the various options of this image and all this image but if you want to add a particular product then you can go to this plus sign and you have an image band type ones okay and you can click on the next now you have to select uh, that particular bands of the date bands which you want to overlay one after another so that you have to select in a proper way so here actually i already selected for this particular layer for uh, the, uh, the 29 may so that's why i just selected here as a 17 may okay for the adding layers okay so just click on finish so you will get uh, the informations one after another and you just see here now if you just clicking one and after another you can able to control the layer manager and you can able to see before and after the flood conditions okay so isn't very interesting so this is the 17 may and this is the the 29 may the conditions okay so that is the way we can correlate uh, the particular uh, places okay so you just see here this area this area is our focused area okay of the flood okay so this is after uh, this date 29 may you can say very dark in that but if you see this other as i stretch because maybe this is also showing back it is not because of flood it may be agricultural lands and the water is stuck there because it is near to the river so those are areas are are actually water stuck okay so because of the paddy this region so much the paddy production is going on so you have to be very clear clever to interpret your image okay so you just see properly so this is the place where it is the mostly the effect of the flood okay so we can see now rgb how to create the rgb now here you can uh, 
make a transparency button also to see the changes okay so you can change the board and you can see the using this transparency tool also and you can create the rgb also if you want now uh, you want to focus over the 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 flooded area okay and uh, that you want to uh, creating the rgb so what you have to do you have to select this uh, product from here and then you have to go to the window okay and then you can click on this uh, open rgb window and here now you have to focus only over the that uh, layer which is flood okay so that that's why you have to select the first composite band you can select for uh, the before flood image okay so that you can select and to giving emphasis over uh, that particular uh, flooded area you just select uh, the after flood date image okay that 29th may so then it will be focused on your area so the area with the red which is actually coming with uh, the area which is under flood okay so let's see the output and you can get an idea and see this will be the output you will get so these are the changed area so before here the specular reflections whatever it will be there so that is over the water it is coming very nicely and what are the areas are under uh, uh, like a uh, red those are actually affected by the flood so it is a very good and interesting thing na? so to to process but here as i did with the uh, slc product so it is taking a few huge uh, uh, time otherwise you can go for the slc product sorry normal your uh, that product like uh, grd so it will be very easy task and now you can save this product and you can take it in arcgis pro and you can extract this layer also so uh, so that is the way of how you can creating a, a, a stack image of the two and you can create a flooded layer okay is it interesting okay so if you want to uh, save it in kmz format so that you can take it in kmz and you can take it in our arcgis earth and you can very uh, nicely correlate this informations with that okay so you can give some name wherever you want to save okay like c drive i have the test room okay so that you can give some name like flood flood okay so simply click on save so now this file will save as a kmz and if you want to open it in google earth so you can open it in a google earth or arcgis earth and you can check the results and if you want to take it in arcgis pro then also you can do that you can save it uh, in a proper way because it is taking so much time for the saving so once it will save we can see this output there also but if you want to take it in arcgis pro then you can go the same process like file save as export you can save it in nv format so which i found that it will be perfectly uh, open in arcgis pro and you can do the call analysis either gt for in but you can go for nv formats then you can work very nicely in arcgis pro also okay so that's uh, all about this particular uh, analysis so it will taking time to creating the this particular kmz file so see this is the this is the uh, kmz file which you just created and now i just double click on this particular uh, image and you just see it will going to over uh, you can open it in the and that uh, in google earth or arcgis earth wherever you want you can open it and i can check it see i just open it in our arcgis earth and it will see these are the areas okay of under flood and see you can control the the layer from here and you can simply see these are the area you just see here you can very nicely you can understand this is the actually the agricultural land which is now under water okay so these are the these are the way how can you identify those areas okay so that is so now you want to see the output in uh, google earth or arcgis earth whatever you have so you have to go to that particular folder where you save your data so just like this see i save it in this um, kmz file here so just double click on this kmz file and you can see uh, within a second it will open it in arcgis earth and it will be set in exactly that locations where it is actually belonging from and then you can compare it 
that is the exactly flooded area or already you have the water area uh, is there okay so that you can compare so uh, you will be uh, it's kind of a validation process like you have to understand uh, that area which is showing red so that may not be a water body before okay so you can check it you just see here the are the places so you can go and you can switch off this or switch off this and you can see this okay so this are the area is actually agricultural land but after flood those are actually underwater okay so red is actually now here this red is not meaning of the vegetation this red is actually meaning of the flooded area okay so and if you want to take it in in arcgis pro and do the further analysis then you can i will always suggest you can go and save it in export and export it in the mp format okay so wherever you want to save you can save it in hdr and click on the export product so it will be saved properly okay it will take few minutes time to save but it will be uh, saved properly okay so that's is a interesting lecture on the so now you just see here the output of the each band separately what you, i just uh, did now so that the same band you can take it in arcgis pro you just see here it is may coming as a black like this so what you have to do you just click on this click on the mask okay sorry not mask you can go to the stretch types okay and you can click on the standard deviation so you will get to see and if you want to remove the black backgrounds you can click on the this display background okay so like this you can you can put a mask over all the uh, the images whatever you want okay and you can subset your area also like that okay so that's a interesting thing over the arcgis pro how you can do work and see uh, if you want to create the same process over the arcgis pro so that is the process you just see here what i did okay so i just uh, already created it but still i just showed you like uh, if you want to make the composite of this all bands now you have to go to the imagery go to the processing okay and then click on this composite bands so oh, sorry uh, i mean i already not selected uh, any bands okay so you just suppose uh, required to create over these two bands like uh, this one and you want to click on the this one okay so that's why you have to take properly I means you have to select it and you have to select this so 17 and 29 the vv only you want to create now so that you just need to select it here and you in imagery you have a very good options to create this composite band so if you click that then you just see here this will image will come in something like that okay so now what you have to do you have to you already selected same way like uh, your highlighted uh, will be your blue one okay so that 17 27 and you want to highlight the flooded area so select those flooded date okay then go here and do the standard deviation and you want to put the mask over the display background value you can display background value so so these are the area uh, okay so which is coming in a, a very much uh, red pixels okay so those are actually your more flooded area okay so those are the flooded area so same process which is explained here here it is visualization is something better okay but you if i did all this processing in arcgis pro i will get good results there also but uh, why i'm telling this because most of the people uh, if you don't have arcgis pro or uh, the pre-processing any kind of uh, data so in that case this will be the game changer the combination of snap and arcgis pro so thank you everyone i hope you like this lecture i know this is a little big lecture but it will be very useful for everyone to to produce uh, the flood map from your slc product okay so i hope grd is also very easy but if you are requesting me to how to do in grd so definitely i will uh, show you on that so please comment uh, sections you please let me know you want to see on the grd or not thank you and if you like my channel please subscribe